Hello, Farming George here. The field I'm standing in is known as Sprats. It is the first field where I'm implementing changes to my farming operation based around ecological and biodiversity principles. I tend to describe this as a systems approach to agriculture. Starting at the bottom of the field, I've got this area of winter bird food currently in stewardship. Now, if I'm perfectly honest, I don't really love this option. It's really specific from a nature point of view. However, it does give me a way in which I can receive some money for what I'm attempting to do. This area actually maps out the wild seam which I'm carving through the middle of my farm, interlinking each field together. Once this current option ends, this area will be planted up with sporadic trees and shrubs and undersown with local grasses from the fobbing marshes. The aim will be to green hay this area to get those grasses growing. I have then drawn a rectangle into the middle of the field to make farming operations simple and yet still manageable with large machinery. The areas of this field outside of that rectangle will be planted up this winter with native trees and fruit bushes, which over the next 10 to 15 years will become more and more wild, and I will harvest less and less of that fruit, leaving more to nature. These wild margins connect directly into my wild seam, meaning there's permanent organic cover and plenty of permanent dense habitat for the animals on this farm. At the top of the field, against the reasonably busy high road, I'm planting a stretch of woodland around 80 to 90 metres deep. In order for arable farming, and especially organic arable farming, to be successful, I know I need ruminants. But with the top of the field being open, I'd be really concerned about the visual noise and vehicular pollution and the effect of that on my livestock. So these trees will act as a fantastic buffer against that. Long term, it should enable woodland pigs and potentially provide building and furniture making timber for my grandchildren. A lovely term I heard recently to describe this is being good ancestors. Set up like this, the middle of my fields would still be an ecological desert, despite all the amazing habitat creation on the field edges. Speaking to entomologists, I learned that insects will only venture out 20 metres into the unknown from the edge of the field. And so I decided to slice my field up with agroforestry belts, six metre wide belts for trees and 36 metre wide alleys for arable cropping. Like this, the maximum journey for any insect into the unknown is 18 metres and theoretically no dead spots in the middle of my fields. I chose six metre wide belts to enable me to have double and triple runs of trees growing up them. My issue with a single run of trees is that it enables you, as the farmer, to be too tidy, mowing up both sides of the tree run. With double or triple runs, there will always be that area of wild where nature can really feel at home. I decided not quite to call it done yet though. Conventionally, even with agroforestry, the entire field would be cropped with one crop. But from an agronomic point of view, I've always been fascinated by the idea of what I am terming microfields i.e. I am choosing to leave my headland purely as a forage crop and to turn machinery. In my instance, this turning headland will be about 20 metres wide. The microfields have tons of great benefits. For one, if you grow lots of different crops, like me, they create distinct, logistically useful areas of set size to grow those crops. And they also give you greater rotational flexibility to deal with injurious weeds, i.e. if just one or two microfields have an issue, you can extract those from your rotation and deal with that issue in a timely fashion. From a mob grazing standpoint, these predetermined grazing cell sizes will work easily for managing livestock also. The turning headlands have lots of logistical benefits. For me to farm agroecologically, animals are critical, and so to have an area of permanent forage which can be cut is useful, but they also give a permanent place for water tanks to be placed. Whenever I have visited farms with rotational livestock, their arable fields always have an area which is weedy, and that's described as a place where the water tank was. This eliminates that issue. Also, not having to sow the headland of the field means that you get away from issues such as double drilling, which can lead to lodging and disease in the crop. What's more, these permanent turning headlands link my wild margins to my agroforestry belts, ensuring that these belts are an interconnected part of the puzzle also, not just islands. There is one thing I know I have missed out on here, and I'm scratching my head as to whether or not to include it. I need a lot of water on my farm, partly from an irrigation standpoint for when I introduce some level of market gardening on the farm, but also from a nature point of view. So there is a chance that one of these top alleys will be partly converted to a reservoir or a pond. Watch this space. So hopefully this goes some way to explain this systems form of agriculture that I'm beginning to implement across my farm. This system is thoroughly designed to work for me in converting to organic agriculture. This is habitat creation on a massive scale to ensure that I have tons of beneficial insects at my disposal. But critically, this system would still work spectacularly well for large-scale farming operations, still utilising all of the artificial inputs and big machinery. 
For example, I'm currently not going to be planting trees for the first 42 meters up my belts to ensure that a 36 meter sprayer has plenty of room to turn at the ends of the alleys. However, I am hoping to plant these sections up with trees pretty soon, as soon as I feel confident that I don't need to be applying micronutrition or compost teas to my organic rotation. I know that I'll have mistakes in this system. In fact, I'm pretty sure the mistake that's going to annoy me most is choosing to plant in a straight line rather than contour planting my tree belts. But I'm not going to let a small issue like that stop me from pushing forward with this. I'm also sure that not all my trees are going to be perfect, but worst case scenario, in 10 or so years time, those trees can come out and enter the fibre market and I'll just plant some new ones in their place. But farming would be awfully boring without mistakes. And either way, I am certain that this field, and in time my entire farm, will look spectacularly gorgeous and be abundantly productive in a truly diverse range of nutritional groups with beautiful, bountiful biodiversity.